Coast Guard works by the creed Semper Paratus, which means always ready. Hi, I'm Sarah Edwards. And I'm Barry Nolan. Welcome to Evening Magazine, where we're usually always ready to bring you a couple of good stories. Tonight, we're down at the U.S. Coast Guard Support Center in Boston on Pier 2, where the men of the Coast Guard have been making the waters safer for sailors for some time now. That's right, Barry, and one of the lesser-known ways they are doing that is by buoy tending. In our second story, we'll go aboard the Coast Guard Cutter Bittersweet to find out about the difficult and often dangerous task of tending the buoys, and we'll see how it keeps our waterways safe. Also tonight, we'll take a look at the life of a popular young television star, Christy McNichol. Some say she's been growing up a bit too fast. She'll answer that question for us tonight. Then Joyce Colhaywick discovers how computers are helping average families with financial management. And did you know that Boston was not always the capital of Massachusetts? Ron Robin talks about such interesting facts tonight in his Facts or Fable series. All of that coming up next on Tuesday's Evening Magazine. <laughs> A lot of young people who think they would like to become stars would actually find themselves, well, out of their depth in Hollywood. The pressure of all that money, that attention, life in the fast lane can be very destructive to the still vulnerable personality of a young adolescent. And if you believe everything you read, some might think that that was what happened to young Christy McNichol, the star of Family. But that's not what Evening's Donna Jordan discovered when she went out to spend some time with Christy. <laughs> Now this is the Christy McNichol we all know and love. The level-headed and very adult Buddy Lawrence, tomboy star of the highly acclaimed ABC television drama, Family. Even though the series has ended, it's a portrayal the public won't let her forget. Are you really as wise as Buddy is? People say that I'm too wise to be 18, especially when it comes to emotionally wise, you know, head wise. Um, maybe that's true, I don't know. I've I've been through a lot in 18 years. I've been through a lot. No longer the perky seven-year-old who began her career in television commercials, Christy has matured into one of the most naturally gifted young film actresses in Hollywood. A marvelous transformation unfolding before our very eyes in picture after picture. Her latest film is Neil Simon's Only When I Laugh. Christy plays a daughter much wiser than her alcoholic mom, actress Marsha Mason. I have to think about this. So you can think, take all the time you want, and then you can tell me at the bus stop. Oh, I should have had a son. With no theatrical training to speak of, Christy learns the discipline necessary for success in show business from her mom, Caroline, who was divorced at 22 with three children to support. As a matter of fact, Christy got her start in the business when she tagged along with mom moonlighting on movie sets for some extra income. Pretty soon, Christy began getting auditions on her own. Well, when I was young and I would go on interviews for small acting parts when I, when after I did commercials and stuff, my mom would always, you know, come. And she, we would get the script and we'd read in the office with everybody else and stuff. And my mom would lean over and just help me read it. And for some reason, she had a, a touch of um, ability to, to teach me how to sound natural and normal. And she said, go in there and be yourself. Christy quickly points out her mom is definitely not a pushy stage mother type. And as for the other talented member of the McNichol clan, there's no competition between her and brother Jimmy, a rising star in his own right. This brother and sister duo definitely stays in tune. He's so fine. Brother and I are very close, especially now. We used to fight like cats and dogs when I was young. You know, um, but now he's like another mother because he's overprotective and he's always coming over and saying, "Did you lock the door? Is all the electricity off? Uh, all the stuff, you know, like like two moms." But he's so cute. It's great that Jimmy and Christy's careers are really taking off right now. But Christy would like her career to soar in a little bit different direction. You see, she's very tired of being typecast as the little girl who looks like the little boy. So she's trying to do something about it. And when her fans saw this cover of Us magazine, they were a little shocked to see the new Christy and also see that it says she takes a live-in lover. It makes them wonder, is Hollywood's little girl growing up too fast? I don't have a live-in lover. I may have said I did. Um, I don't. The picture on the cover was okay and everything. It's just that I didn't have picture approval. I would not have picked that picture to be on the cover. 
I didn't like it, and I didn't like what they wrote on the cover. Even though her Hollywood hairdresser boyfriend, partly responsible for a new look, does not live in, he's her most important relationship to date. Are you still going with the same man? Yeah. And do you have marriage plans? No, not marriage plans. But yes, we're seeing each other. What about, would you like a white picket fence someday, or is acting your career forever? No, uh, I would like a white picket fence and the six kids. If I have kids, there'll be a lot of them. No doubt about it, this little darling's growing up. But the white picket fence will have to wait a few years. You see, beyond the obvious changes in her appearance, she's growing professionally, too. Her emotion-packed performances as Buddy Lawrence's family have already secured her two Emmy Awards and endeared her to the public and hard-boiled Hollywood types as well. She was four-time Oscar nominee Neil Simon's first choice for the role of Polly when casting his new film. One of the most prolific playwrights of our time, Simon is not an easy man to please. Christy is unique. Uh, I watch, I've watched the film about eight or nine times, and when she's in the bedroom, she's telling uh, the mother off, the camera doesn't lie, the camera's close up on her face. And when she is so angry and so bitter at the mother for taking another drink and behaving badly, uh, and I can see the tears in her eyes, they aren't the tears of an actress. Uh, she, she got it from someplace deep within, and that's only Christie's secret, where it comes from. You asked me the other night how I really felt about you. I was so angry at you for never being around when I really needed someone. Well, you're around now, aren't you? And it sure as hell is a disappointment to find out that I was better off when you weren't around, Holly. I, no, I don't give a damn. I just draw from inside energy and from inside emotion. Or I think back on things that I've been through. Or, or if I have to get emotional, I think back on something like a dog dying that I had. I had a few dogs that died. And I think back on emotional things that happened besides that. Show business insiders say this could be the performance that earns Christie her first Academy Award. When sitting in the audience, you can feel Christie touching something inside. You feel as if you know her personally. But Christie, of course, doesn't have a lot of personal time to spend with anybody. When not filming one movie, she's on the road publicizing another. Would you please welcome Christy McNichol. All that applause and adoration can be quite a heady trip, but Christy McNichol seems to be one down-to-earth young lady who will succeed in a business where the lure of stardom and abundance of drugs have ruined more than one future star. The problem, I think, is, is that too many kids don't have any direction for themselves. They don't get along with their family. They're always fighting with their mom and dad because of something or other. And I think that creates a problem. I think more families should get together and uh, try to talk things out or maybe see a therapist and talk together and bring out problems and bring out answers and, and just communicate. I, I, I don't think that there's enough of that. And thank God I have it in my life or I don't think I'd be very together. Well, young Christy is already looking for her next major film role. She says she'd like to play either a funny person, a handicapped person, or a rock star. Shows quite a range. We'll be back with more of Evening Magazine in just a moment as Joyce Go Haywood takes a look at how computers are helping the average family with money matters. Stay with us. It's nothing to do with the Coast Guard. What okay. is special about today? Uh, it was the uh, publication date of the first issue of Boy's Life. <laughs> No, no, it's Sandwich Day. 300 years ago today, the Earl of Sandwich created that delicious snack, probably pastrami on rye. That, did you know that Boston wasn't always the capital of Massachusetts? That I didn't know, but tonight in Facts or Fables, I think Ron Robin is going to talk about that. Also tonight, Joyce Gil Hayward takes a look at how average families are putting the computer to use for helping money matters. Every month, I go through the same thing, trying to pay all my bills and still have a little left over to do something extra. But these days, that gets harder and harder to do. Good evening. I'm Joyce Kohaywick. In 1981, inflation and taxes make short-term monthly expenses difficult enough. But what about long-term planning, sending the kids to college, or planning for retirement? For a lot of people, that seems impossible. But at Consumer Financial Institute in Newton, Massachusetts, they just may have some answers. As financial planners, Consumer Financial Institute provides financial profiles to families or individuals with modest incomes, and the cost is only $75 or $125. Dick and Beverly Gauthier represent one of those families. 
Both are in their mid-30s, own a home, and have two children. She teaches part-time, and he recently gave up a teaching career to work in public relations for a major technology firm. And like most Americans these days, they're looking for advice on budgeting and long-term monetary planning. Now, they are in the process of filling out a questionnaire provided by the Consumer Financial Institute, which will give the company the pertinent financial information that is needed to set up a plan. How do you anticipate what college is going to be 15 years from now? But if they can do it, it'll be worth the 75. I feel I need financial planning at this particular time because things just seem to be getting away from me. In that, in that sense, I don't mean necessarily that my income is not enough for all the things I want to do, but the interest rates, I don't know how to keep up with, let alone anticipate. And I don't have the sophistication to be able to do that kind of thing. The form is sent back to CFI and after three weeks provides families with a comprehensive computerized readout and forecast, which they call a personal profile and projection report. George Barbie, executive director of CFI, explained how the computer has made this possible. Well, the computer has really, in combination with a human element, which is very important, has enabled us to manage the brain power of experts, experts in law and in investments, accounting, insurance, whatever. And we manage this from an, an independent viewpoint. But the information just doesn't get plopped into the computer. The questionnaires are looked over carefully before they're submitted to the computer. And it's looked over again once the report has been completed, especially for any unusual circumstances. Since the Gauthiers told CFI that their priority was sending their children to college, their plan was based upon that. They were given several options to set aside $2,000 every year in a savings program that would offer the highest interest rate but with low to moderate risk, like money market certificates, or to invest a smaller amount at greater risk, like real estate. Beverly could go back to work full-time, scholarships and student loans could be pursued, and their children could bolster the income by working part-time. We are giving them a framework and a, and a, a pattern to, in which to look at themselves and then at that point, they move ahead with the financial advisors of their own choice. Well, none of us may ever have as much money as we think we need, but with computerized financial planning, we can at least afford to figure out how much we've got and begin to understand where it's going. 200, in my checking, please. Ah, beautiful historic Salem. The capital of Massachusetts? Good evening, this is Ron Robin with Facts or Fables. First of all, we've got to establish what the capital is. That's, well, where the government is going to take place. Well, in July of 1728, Governor Burnett came to town, and he wanted a salary, and the general court wanted to give him an annual grant. Well, he was very upset by this. So as a punishment to Boston, take a look here now in the journals of the House of Representatives. It says that he adjourned the court to meet in Salem, Massachusetts. Well, on October 31st, they did meet in Salem here in this old courthouse. It's no longer in existence. But the first order of business came from the representatives, and they said, why do we have to come all the way out here to Salem, Massachusetts? The second order of business was from the governor himself, and he says, I want my salary. Well, they wouldn't give it to him. So what did the governor do? Well, he simply dissolved the general court, and he called for a new election. And guess what? The new court didn't give him his salary either. Well, they decided they were going to adjourn. On August 23rd, 1729, they adjourned. They said, well, let's try Cambridge and see if we can get something squared away there. Well, Governor Burnett's troubles weren't over even then, because on his way over, his carriage hit something in the roadway. The carriage flipped over, and the governor flipped into the river. Well, he didn't drown. He just caught cold and died a few days later. The capital was returned to Boston. But this wasn't the first or the last time that Salem, Massachusetts became the capital. In June of 1774, Governor Gage moved the capital here once again to Salem as a punishment to Boston because of all the terrible things that were going on, the Tea Party and what have you. Hopefully, uh, this story won't give any bright ideas to the current administration. Well, if you thought buoys were those little objects bobbing in the water, you're in for a surprise. We're about to see the mammoth-sized buoys that mark our waterways and the Coast Guard personnel that had the difficult job of maintaining them, tending the buoys when we continue. The first time I baked these cookies for my little girl, I used sun-made raisins. They were her very favorites. They're still my favorite, Mama. So is sun-made. It's the only raisin my little girl would eat. <laughs> still is, Mom, because they always taste so good and fresh. 
You get the feeling the sun may missions and overall patrolling has another vital function that the public rarely hears about, maintaining the buoy system. And that doesn't mean just checking the small buoys you'll see bobbing about, but also the giant buoys that mark the waterways for larger vessels. And tonight we're going aboard the Bittersweet here at Woods Hall Coast Guard Base to go on a special buoy tending mission to find out why it's the roughest and most dangerous of all Coast Guard operations. Since before the days of the clipper ships, mariners have needed all the help they could get to find their way safely through New England's treacherous waters. Shipwrecks claimed hundreds of lives a year at times, so a system of navigation was designed for all U.S. waterways. Just like a road map tells travelers on land where to go, a navigational chart tells sailors how to get where they want to go. By following marker buoys described in the chart, mariners can find their way as well as stay out of trouble. There are all kinds of buoys, each one telling something different about itself, a sort of signpost of the waterways. Making sure these buoys are where they're supposed to be is the job of the United States Coast Guard, and the cutter Bittersweet, with her crew of 54, is in charge of 136 buoys from Newburyport, Massachusetts to Watch Hill, Rhode Island. Today's mission takes us to buoy number 26, not far from Woods Hole. A buoy this size costs $15,000 to replace, and the Coast Guard would like to see it last a long time. So every two years, each buoy is hauled out, cleaned, and inspected. As the crew of the Bittersweet hoists number 26 aboard, each one of them is aware that one wrong move could bring this nine-ton buoy right down on top of them. And if the 150-foot anchor chain slips, the buoy could slide overboard, taking a few crewmen with it. The man in charge of this huge operation is Captain Charles Bell. The men look like construction workers out there with their hard hats on. This work is pretty rough, right? Yes, it is. And uh, when we put in a, a full day, a lot of times we'll work for two and three days, 24 hours a day, in order to get our schedule together, having lost days to weather, not being able to work with bad weather. So it's a very fatiguing job. What kind of dangers are involved with this work? The aids to navigation mission, uh, that is always dangerous as far as the men working in and under around heavy weights, tons of steel and concrete coming over the side of the ship where the ship is rocking and rolling in the seaway. Excuse me, I understand you have one of the most important jobs up there. What are you doing? Just checking out the daylight controls and the uh, changing all the bulbs, checking the voltage on the batteries, make sure it's not too low. What kind of things are you looking for when you're cleaning up the buoy? Basically anything that'll uh, like eat the paint, you know, it causes rust. This one's, you know, kind of fairly close to shore, so there's not really much growth on it. If you get out really far, there's all kinds of really wild things growing on it. Sea life, you know. Now to give you an idea of the size of the equipment we're dealing with, this is a battery from a lighted buoy. It stands five feet, weighs 512 pounds. It's not your typical flashlight battery, is it? And the light has to last for up to two years. For instance, if the light goes out and it's marking a shallow area or a rock, it could spell disaster for an approaching ship. How important is this job? Well, I think it's very important because of the, uh, all the shipping today and Everybody's worried about the oil pollution. If a tanker would go aground because the buoy was off station, you'd have a, a major oil spill and an environmental uh, disaster. In a heavy storm in December of 1976, the oil tanker Argo Merchant ran aground off Nantucket Island. Because of her exceptional seaworthiness, the Bittersweet was sent to pump out the Argo Merchant's cargo of oil. Although a real environmental disaster was narrowly averted, the need to keep shipping lanes clearly marked was made frighteningly clear. Let's get a mark. Good luck. 
50, 20. To make sure these crucial markers are where they're supposed to be, careful sightings are made to determine the precise position for replacing the buoy. On the right, 36, 48. Ensign Linda Johansson coordinates the replacement procedure. It requires good seamanship and timing, and when everything's set, the buoy's six-ton concrete sinker is released. 16. On the right, 36, 48. accidents and, and uh, such as that with uh, marine traffic, uh, you feel that you've done your job fairly well. Thanks to the bittersweet, buoy 26 is safely back in position. And during the dead of winter, this ship will take on additional duties, having to break the ice around the Vineyard Sound and Nantucket area in its continuing efforts to keep our waterways safe. Don't go away. Evening Magazine will continue in just a moment. Now you can buy two kinds of Cornish game hens. The typical frozen rock Cornish game hen and the Purdue fresh Cornish game hen. I don't call it a rock Cornish game hen because it's not frozen like a rock. And tests prove it's at least 40% more tender than any rock Cornish game hen you can buy. The Purdue fresh Cornish game hen. It melts in your mouth, not on your counter. When most everything your dog eats is soft, keeping his teeth clean and white may be hard. Soft, 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 soft. Give your dog Milk Bone Dog Biscuits the crunch food. Milk Bone Dog Biscuits in three different sizes and hardness helps keep teeth clean and white. Crunch, 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 crunch. When most everything your dog eats is soft, nutritious Milk Bone Dog Biscuits give him crunch. Now in cheese flavor, too. Catch the fast-paced police action of Hawaii Five-O. Where in three, suspense and high-caliber drama set in a lush, colorful paradise are all part of the game. Jack Lord stars as McGarrett, a tough cop who takes those cases others can't handle. Hawaii Five-O, weeknights, 12.30 on Channel 4. This is the Coast Guard Cutter Pendant, and you know, Barry, it's a harbor tug, but they use it occasionally to tend buoys, the little buoys, though, not the mammoth size that we saw. The big boys. The big boys. You know, we were out on the bittersweet on a calm, clear day like this, and the job was still difficult. Can you imagine when the seas are rough, trying to haul those big buoys aboard? Quite a task. In the winter, especially in the rough weather, when the northeaster blows, no, thank you. I'll stay home uh, tomorrow night instead of that and watch Evening Magazine. <laughs> because there will be a nice story on about a young couple that wins their dream house in a sort of unique raffle. It was a fundraiser where you got a dream house for a hundred bucks. We'll also see a touching story about a mother and daughter reunited after 34 years. We'll find out why they were separated for so long and how it all came out. Also tomorrow night, Dr. Jim Wasco takes a look at state-of-the-art stress machines that can help to diagnose heart disease. And Susan Wasserstein teaches you how to bid at a fast-paced auction. So please join us tomorrow night. All you boys and girls. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that.
What are you looking